I'll call it Facebook for some reason. Okay. Um, but anyway, we're here to present you the uh, Wonderlink, and it's our answer to BMW's NAV system. Uh, for people who aren't familiar, the NAV system, the NAV5 and the NAV6, is an integrated GPS sat nav system that can be controlled through the BMW Wonder Wheel, which is essentially a mouse on the handlebars, kind of like you'd find on a car steering wheel, the multifunction but buttons. Um, Keith and I came up with this because uh, number one, the uh, nav system is expensive. Um, it retails for, it varies, but it's typically right around $1,000. And it's fixed function. It's not uh, future proof, so to speak. Um, you can't add future applications to it. And probably the biggest reason is everybody has a cell phone, a smartphone, and your smartphone can do many, if not all the functions that the um, BMW nav system does, plus many, many more. And so uh, currently at this point, um, we're just getting through the initial research and design phase. And once we hit production, we're gonna start uh, looking into other devices that kind of uh, leverage off the power of the Wonderlink and um, the information, uh, the data off the uh, BMW. The BMW is very data driven. If there's any information to be had, the BMW has it and we have access to that. Did you add anything to that, Keith? Nope, uh, that's a good explanation. Um, yeah, you know, the, the idea is the, that um, there's also a lot of cool integrations with your phone already um, with GoPros and, and action cams and third party tire pressure monitoring systems. And you can use your phone along with the Wander link to control all this in, in one central location. And we, we will look in the future to integrate with other cool technologies, um, possibly controlling uh, the action cam with the Wonder Wheel. Um, however, we've written action cam software into the app um, if you want to use your phone as an action cam also. So that would lead, uh, you know, it, it's a really cool concept to try and integrate your cell phone and use that as an action cam or a, aka a GoPro type of uh, device and a lot of that depends on how the actual phone is oriented on your motorcycle. Obviously, it can't be um, stuck behind a dash without uh, the camera um, having, uh, you know, the perspective being off. So uh, we communicate from the Wonderlink, which is the physical interface, to the motorcycle, which is this device here. I don't know if you can see it very well, um, and it's essentially this box. And this is what clips into the um, BMW GPS prep nav cradle. And um, from that point, uh, the, the uh, Wonderlink hardware, it communicates with your phone via Bluetooth. So there's no actual wired connection. So essentially you could be using your phone um, and just simply uh, like you would the nav system is, excuse me, let me get in the frame here. Um, you could just simply, this is our magnetic mount, um, and uh, you could orient your phone that way, or you could orient your phone this way, Oops, excuse me, and orienting your phone in such a manner where you could actually use your phone as a GoPro. Um, again, the communication is wireless, so the phone doesn't need to be actually attached to the Wonderlink. The Wonderlink simply needs to be attached to your GPS prep. And uh, in terms of mount options, um, Keith has designed this magnetic uh, mount where there's some, what is it, eight, nine? Uh, 14. 14. 14, very strong. And 32 uh, magnets. magnets. And um, just simply in the back of my cell phone case, I have a little metallic tab that uh, you know, creates the bond there. Um, in real world use, we've noticed that uh, even though gravity is offset by this little uh, plateau on the bottom, uh, under heavy vibration or road uh, bumps, um, the phone may laterally shift left or right a little bit. And our quick fix for that was using uh, this amp adventure band, which essentially mounts behind and it pins down the four corners of the phone. And from that standpoint, it's rock solid. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a great system.
but Keith has been, uh, so Keith did a great job on that, but uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about, or actually uh, Keith has been getting questions about the Hondo mount. So I'm gonna yeah. let Keith talk to you about yeah. the Hondo mount. Yeah, so we, we try to do things as non-proprietary as possible. So we, we piggybacked using this um, four hole mount pattern, it's called an amp mount pattern. It's a, somewhat of a standard. Um, it allows us to mount a, you know, a standard RAM mount ball if you'd like to. But um, like Wayne said, um, a lot of our backers um, and a few people out on the internet has, have asked us, you know, um, what about this Hondo mount? Um, and I hadn't heard of it until um, people brought this forward. So I, I've ordered one and I have to say that the thing is awesome. Um, it's really, really nicely designed. Um, and when paired with the, uh, the Wonderlink, it really is a nice, tight, um, low profile system. Um, and as you can see, we can, we can mount the Honda mount also, um, or the Ram or the magnetic mount. But as Wayne said, your phone doesn't need to be on the mount. It could, if you like to have your phone in your tank bag or, um, mounted on your handlebars, um, you can do that and still see the motorcycle data, still control it via the Wonderlink. And you may ask, why would you want your your phone in your tank bag with it connected? And the simple reason would just be data logging. Yep. So it's actively streaming all the data through your bike, or excuse excuse me, from the bike through the Wonderlink to your phone. So um, you know, some people have had some reservations about actually mounting their phone up there. It doesn't necessarily have to be there, but if you do want that display functionality of showing real time data via your phone, um, then you know absolutely you have to use that that method. But you don't have to if you want to just log data like yeah. trip performance. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's essentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you could just have, you could have your screen off and, and your phone in, in your tank bag being charged, you know, um, either by the wonder link or, or if you have power in your tank bag uh, and just, it could be logging for you in yeah. the background. So um, what most people are most interested in is how it works. Yep. So we would like to give you a live demonstration of how that works. Um, so if you could bear with us a moment, we're gonna shift cameras and just kind of reorient a little bit. And then are you gonna switch to that feed? And do I have to go yeah. off? I am on here. No, I think you What's go that? off. Now you can go off. Okay. You on that? Yep. Okay. Okay. So now we have the view of the motorcycle. Um, just going to turn this on. The Wonderlink snaps in like uh, just like your nav mount and will lock in, or sorry, your, your nav six or nav five. Um, And then from there, sorry, I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk through the pairing process with you guys. So, okay, so it's whited out, Keith. I don't think anybody can see that. Mm. So. There you go, uh, somewhat. If you folks are having issues trying to see that, essentially in your Bluetooth settings menu, you're gonna see a entry for Wonderlink and Keith has now selected that. And that's actually the Wonderlink dashboard. But what we wanted to show you is how the Wonder Wonderlink works is it, it uh, shows up as a general keyboard, meaning you can scroll through your phone and unfortunately the white space, oh. um, yeah, it's, we, we beg your pardon, but I don't know if you can see what Keith is tired. He's uh, using the Wonder Wheel to actually toggle through his available apps, and he's going to navigate his way over to the Wonderlink app and uh, go ahead and turn the Wonderlink on. And there you go. There's essentially the dashboard, so to speak, and you can see the real-time data there. Now, uh, in adjunct to that, we've also added some navigation applications, some media playing application, and um, there's gonna be future application.
why we would do that and not just use, let's say, Google Maps per se, is even though Android supports keyboard uh, mouse functionality, a lot of the apps are specific to touchscreen and they don't really allow for the, for the, for the general keyboard setup. So Keith has, has, has essentially accessed the, the, the different applications and made them so they are good viable platforms for a general mouse. And then I'll let, I'll let Keith uh, demonstrate a little bit there for you. So I'll, I'll just put it in the, the cradle now so you can see it. Yeah, um, that's good. In the cradle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just going to go over each screen one by one. Um, so this is the main data display. Um, right now, it's it's a static grid. Um, one of the one of the things that's come out of our beta testers are they want customization here, um, different grid layouts, multiple grid pages. Um, a TFT dash like uh, view. Um, so it's going to be one of the first things I work on, um, you know, once, once we get past the Kickstarter. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you see your typical engine temp, ambient temp, gear, odometer, trip one, trip two. Um, the front and rear tire pressure actually don't actually get sent until the bike rolls a few hundred feet down the road. Um, the other thing is you'll notice this little um, fault icon. And if you notice on the dash, there's faults now. And it's kind of washed up. Oh, sorry. Um, um, fortunately, what you, you <laughs> can't really see here is um, there's three faults being displayed. Um, the ABS self-diagnosis diagnosis not complete, the ASC self-diagnosis not complete, and uh, I'm currently low on fuel. Um, all three of those. Um, Alerts oh, are around the screen. Oh, there you go. So we'll um, go back here. Um, some of the functions intentionally aren't controlled by the Wonder Wheel. Um, it's safety. Um, we don't really think you need to um, be trying to uh, uh, view, your, view your data logs and stuff like that um, from the Wonder Wheel. Um, um, but show them what you can with the Wonder Wheel Keith, like the yeah. media and the car. So um, the next page is the media page. This media page will control whatever active Android media player you have running, um, as long as they implement the standard API um, for control. What we found is all your popular apps do. Um, I've tested Spotify, Pandora, Sirius XM, Google Play, um, music, um, all of them have, have worked great through this interface. So you'll see the album art, you know, artist, song title, album, you know, your typical things. Um, and then with the Wonder Wheel, you can control, you know, your, your fast forward, you can hit um, back and, and forth. Oh, sorry. Um, previous song, um, next song. Pause, play. Um, the next page is, is just a, a magnetic compass. Um, big, um, you can display it in degrees and in cardinal. Um, that, that compass is actually using your phone's compass. Um, this is what we call a quick task page. Um, this is something we're working on too. Um, we've got a lot of feedback that uh, um, people feel there's a lot of wasted space there, and uh, maybe we can come up with a like a grid layout or something. Um, but these are, you know, common tasks we feel that you might want to do from the motorcycle. Um, navigations, launch your your favorite navigation app. Um, launch it, Keith. Oh. So, so I, I use Google Maps. Um, they will. It, yeah, unfortunately, you can't see it. It's washed out, but he has. Uh, you know, Google Maps, as you yeah. would expect to find uh, in any Android phone. And we'll go back and um, go home. Basically, you have a setting that uh, you can set your home address as a quick uh, launch, and this will launch and, and, and route you. Um, and uh, you, you probably won't see this either, but it's, it's routing me to my house, which I'm already here. We'll go back. 
Um, call favorite number again. It's a it's a setting. You can set whatever number you want. A quick call from your from your phone, and um, just to take a step back. Um, the idea is you you pair your phone also to a headset. Um, I have a um, Bluetooth uh, Chatterbox X1, uh, but any Bluetooth headset will work for you. Yeah, um, well, it'll work with the Senna. A lot of people have asked about the Senna. Works with the Senna. Yep. Um, that's that's how we that's how you get the audible alerts and, and um, you know navigation routing information. Um, call contact. Um, we'll go through um, a list of your contacts, um, and then from there you can call them. Um, take a photo. Now this is what Wayne was saying, where your camera would need to be oriented properly. You know, maybe off to the side if you have a larger phone or uh, mounted um, in portrait mode, um, and then you could just take a take a picture here, and uh, it's it's there and in my camera roll. Um, we also have video recording. Um, this will again, if your phone's oriented in a way where it, you know the video is going to be acceptable, you can just kick off a recording and it will run in the background. Unfortunately. Background recording is only functional on Android. Um, Apple will not allow such things. Um, so on the iOS version, you would just, you'd have to stay on that page. And you know, um, if you left the page, the video recording would stop. Um, the next one is TripLog. TripLog will log um, not only your um, latitude, longitude, altitude, speed, but it also logs every um, bit of data that we've um, we've gleaned from the motorcycle, um, uh, it, including stuff that isn't represented on that data grid. Um, um, volt, battery voltage, um, auto trip, um, and uh, a few others. I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, but it's all uh, in, in stored in a CSV format or, or a spreadsheet format um, that you can then um, import into whatever spreadsheet program or um, there's this great software called Dashware where you can take your video and render it along with your, your data you acquired um, or GPS visualizer. Um, it, it's just uh, in, a, in a very easy to work with format that you can really do with whatever you'd like with it. Um, and then uh, save a waypoint, um, pretty obvious. Um, and then uh, voice assist. So th what this will do is um, bring up um, Google Voice Assistant. Um, mine uh, apparently needs to be set up, but it's, it did launch. Um, but that's how you give it voice commands. Um, Let's see, I guess the next thing I'd like to show you is the is some some data viewing. Um, first, we'll look at it at a trip log I did here. It's it's not the the most interesting trip log, but um, you'll get the idea that um, essentially it will it will uh, sorry. Um, Anyways, there's a there's a satellite map at, at the top that you can see, and, and below it is a is a is a textual summary of of your trip. Um, so like the date it was recorded, total distance, total duration, average speed, max speed, amount of gear shifts, amount of brakes, front and rear, ambient temp, min, max, average, engine temp, min, max, average, um, and then from here you can either share it. Um, so it will use the share function of your phone. So email or save it to your Google Drive, or um, you can delete the um, the actual log from here. And the waypoint side is, is, is gonna be very similar. Um, um, a map and the date recorded, latitude and longitude. And from there, you have options to share it. You know, you can send it over in a text message to your writing buddies, um, open it in your, your favorite map app, or again, delete it if you're done. Mm -hmm. um, 
and the, the little Bluetooth icon at the top gives you your, your current connectivity status to the, to the Wonderlink. So, trying to I think that's pretty, you know, that's the meat and potatoes of the functionality. Essentially, what you can do is manipulate your phone in any which way you want with the Wonder Wheel. Um, and then Keith has come up with what we feel are essential things that you would need while you're writing that are optimized to be uh, uh, manipulated um, via the Wonder Wheel versus just attempting to manipulate, per se, Google Maps, which you spend a real hard time trying to actually uh, do anything via, in Google Maps via the Wonder Wheel just simply because it's, it's optimized for touch touch screen um, interface. So again, we took the most essential things that we thought would be needed while you're motorcycle riding and optimized them for the for the Wonder Wheel. And I think that's a really great explanation. I think it was pretty yeah. thorough. So anyway, there's a little bit of work that needs to be gone. You know, um, we've got some great beta testers and a special thank you to Martin. Um, Martin's been fantastic. He has a ton of great ideas and he's working frantically to keep <laughs> up with all of his suggestions. And we'd like to hear other ones. The, the biggest ones we've heard so far are, you know, let's make that data a little bit more viewable by really maximizing screen size and getting everything bigger. The other thing I think Keith has been hearing is, you know, can we get more of a dash look versus just the numeric, um, you know, like a data table? Can, can we actually make like a, 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 you know, a dashboard, so to speak, a, a graphical dashboard? So. That um, will be very easy to accomplish, but it's not at the top of our list to do at the moment. And Keith is actually going to work on towards creating an open source API where people can set up their data any way they'd like to view it. If you want the data table, great. If you want to make your own kind of dashboard, great. We'll uh, give you access to what you need to kind of format the data in a way you think is reasonable and let you select what data that you want shown. And uh, with that said, um, moving on more towards the hardware end of it, I'm going to have Keith take that guy off. And uh, so essentially what we have is we have an interface uh, that will uh, take your, um, yeah, if you can leave that up because okay. I'm going to test the charging. So uh, essentially, you know, it's a two-part system. It's, uh, it's an app, uh, software app that's made it to our hardware. And <clears throat> in terms of charging, the other thing that the Wonderlink does that the uh, BMW nav systems do not do is uh, charge uh, via USB. So phone charging uh, is would be the primary thing I believe that people are going to use this for. And given that we have a USB A connector, so you can plug in Apple, uh, you know, any type of Android phone that you want. Um, and currently, the initial iteration was for a 12 volt, <clears throat> excuse me, not 12 volt, a 5 watt charging scheme. Um, we have since been asked if we could go up to 10 watts just because of the heavy current draw of running multiple apps and, uh, you know, volume and screen brightness really will pull down a uh, cell phone's battery. So <clears throat> we have researched and uh, believe that the system. Well, it says live and recording. Uh, excuse that for a moment. So anyway, to, to cut it short, basically what I have here is I just have a cheap um, Amazon dummy load and a cheap Amazon uh, current measuring device. And I was going to show you uh, our current charging capability. And Keith, if you could take a moment and come help me maybe for a second. Um, can we get, uh, I don't know if you folks can see this. Yeah, if you could just hold that steady, Keith. What you may or may not be able to see is that we're currently charging at 5.1 watts. And with increasing the load, we're now at over 10 watts. Um, so this is just kind of telling or showing you the capability of the, or excuse me, the charge capability of the Wonderlink. And what I'd like to do uh, is, A, remind you that uh, that's something that the NAV, uh, BMW's NAV system cannot do at all. But what has recently come on the market that uh, Keith and I have found, it, <clears throat> excuse us, is a GS charger. And uh, they promote this at uh, two charging point ports at uh, 10 watts. 
There you go. And uh, I just want to demonstrate for you their, their performance versus our, I have this data annotated. I've done this on the bench multiple times, but just to show you on um, their capability, um, their system is far less efficient than ours. They're getting 4.6 watts at the five volt range or at the five watt range. And they're getting 8.9 at the 10 watt range. The effective efficiency of our system is over 90%. Um, at five watts, I believe it's 93%. At 10 watts, it's 90%. And this Chinese um, charger here, I guess I shouldn't call it Chinese charger, but it, uh, that's how we've been referring to it. Um, it's, uh, it's in the high 60s in terms of efficiency. So it's basically pulling down your, your battery when it doesn't need to, and it's not charging your phone very efficiently. So that's essentially it. Um, it's a hardware slash uh, software package. And uh, we think it's phenomenal. We've got some great feedback from people. And uh, that's essentially our, our spiel. Um, so if Keith doesn't have anything to add to the demonstration, I guess we could make our way over to some questions and answers. So Keith, you want to turn your bike off? Yeah. Or do you? Do you want, or is it going to be okay with the tender? Just turn it on. Okay. Yep. Go live now. It's go off. Okay, so we are. All right. So are we on? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So forgive our yeah. ineptitude when it comes to doing this stuff. Um, so let's see, we did get some questions, um, ahead of time. Yeah. Where did we put, you do this? see, uh, Kev, Kevin, we hope you, you do, you did see all that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure and, when and Kevin, questions. I believe you're the RT owner. I, I also own a, um, a 2015 RTLC RT and, uh, to answer your question. Yeah, it's gonna, everything is going to work in terms of the mounting. Uh, there is an issue though, depending on the size of your phone. Um, it won't fit within the cowl without a, an additional standoff that's going to bring the phone out from the dash a little bit. Um, we, I've played with mine, but I have a work phone and a personal phone and they're two different sizes. So again, it, depending on what phone you're using and the size and the orientation you want, it's going to require a spacer just to physically fit in. Now, if you have a really small phone, you probably don't need any kind of adapter. It'll, it'll work just fine. I will tell you though, that's kind of a stretch of the imagination if you want to charge simultaneously, because even with the shortest profile uh, USB-A uh, charge connectors that we found, there's just simply not enough wiggle room between the, the, the phone and the cowl. Um, and uh, so we've gotten a lot of questions and this kind of segues into the question of, okay, so this is a non-TFT bike. When we say a non-TFT bike, this motorcycle essentially has what you would call, I don't, it's not analog, but it displays the information as a analog uh, system. And there is a little digital readout, but uh, there is a new uh, system that's coming out for the GS, which we refer to as TFT. And I forget what the acronym means. It basically means it has a video screen, much like a phone. And it's going to um, take over some of the functionality and role that the current GS system has. Well, we haven't tested that, but the RT does have a TFT on it currently. And the way the current TFT bikes, the uh, explicitly the, the RT and the K16 bikes is in order to control the NAV5, NAV6, the TFT on the bike has to be set to a navigation page. And uh, once it's on that page, there's a subset of commands. And that subset is the data that's being pushed up to the uh, G or excuse me, the GPS prep, the, essentially what the wonder link needs to clip into. So to answer your question, can we use the, uh, the uh, wonder link with the TFT current or the, excuse me, the bikes that are um, older than 2018? Uh, Yes, we can, but the way the Wonder Wheel interacts, it won't mirror that of the non-TFT bikes. And it's gonna take some adjustment. And um, unfortunately, another note on the older TFT bikes, like the, uh, 
the, the RT and the K-16 up to 2018 is that the data that we're showing in what BMW calls my motorcycle data, that's the tire pressure and the temperature and the running speed and this, that, and the other, that's not available to the cradle. So that's not information we can pull out of the motorcycle to display for you. BMW, I believe have done this is because all that information is already available to you right on your TFT. So there's no real impetus to push that data through to the GPS, um, which begs the question, now the, the GS, I guess the model year 2017 plus is gonna have a TFT. And uh, we haven't tested to see whether the, the data or what BMW calls the extended LIN bus data is gonna be actually on that TFT or if it's gonna function in a way that is similar to the older RT where uh, you know, the Wonder Wheel functionality uh, will be dependent on what screen the TFT is set on. And in that point, if there is going to be a subset of commands that we're kind of limited to. What's beautiful about the system that we have now that spans a, a you know, fairly wide model range yeah. um, is that it's completely uh, universal. So we can do whatever we want. We can manipulate whatever we want. We can write uh, programs, apps, um, and uh, we're free to do what we want. Keith can come up with some open source APIs and uh, you know, have a little cookbook so people can come up with their own apps or their own, um, you know, uh, yeah, basically come up with their own apps and, and utilize the data. So to answer, that's a very, very long question to answer the TFT or long answer to the TFT question. The short answer is we don't know yet. We do know on the surface we can control certain things and we can retrieve certain data. Um, that's just something we haven't spent a lot of time on now because the big push is to get that necessary data on the non-TFT bikes. That's what people really are wanting. So that, I think, answers uh, Kevin's question, I hope. One thing I'd like to add to what Wayne said, too, is um, the actual nav link is, is firmware upgradable also. Um, so in the future, new bikes come out, we could <laughs> update the firmware. So if you get a new bike, you don't have to buy a new Wonderlink. You can just move your Wonderlink to your next bike. Or if you have multiple bikes, you can use it against mm -hmm. multiple bikes. Yeah, or paired on multiple yep. phones. So yeah. not simultaneously, yeah. obviously, but... And, um, I don't know. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yes, it can only be the device can only be paired at one device at a time. So, but you can use your headset yeah. to your phone. Yes. Your phone's not beholden to just yeah. communicate solely to the Wonderland. Yeah, that seems to be a common question. Also, yeah. is your phone your, or your tablet? It's it can have multiple Bluetooth connections. Um, mm -hmm. I I personally use four active connections at a time. Um, you know, I, I think the limit's much higher, but um, Wonderlink in a, in a headset works perfectly great. Oh yeah, there, there's the questions. Okay, so let's see if we answered Kevin's question fully. Looks like, yeah, I, you know, again, Kevin, I'm sorry, I can't fully answer right now what the TFT functionality is gonna be. And that's what you own. You own an older generation TFT bike. I can tell you on the surface, I've tested it on my own personal bike. Yes, we can but we're trying to come up with an optimized scheme. It's gonna be more difficult to implement than the non-TFT bikes, but it is something we can, we have the ability to do when we, we are gonna do that. Um, we just- And we have played a little bit with the, yeah. the how to do it and the, and the navigation paradigm for the slightly different TFTs, but- Exactly. But right. we've been really focused on the GS because that's the, the yeah. largest um, group. Yeah. And then, uh, so now we're gonna go to Matthew who has a question. Is the interface only workable with BMW bikes with the click wheel? Uh, I have a 2009 R1200 GS, is it doable? Um, yeah, in our research, uh, in order to work through things, Keith and I have developed an emulator. Um, I don't know if you, how well you're gonna be able to see this, but basically uh, we've done a, a, a ton of data, ton of testing and demoing on the bike and as a result we've been able to essentially emulate uh, what the motorcycle's doing and the data and the you know interpretation of that data and we've been able to kind of move testing off the bike and actually in you know the lab so to speak so 
you know, kind of expediting thing. What does that mean for you? It means that, well, yeah, it's very real. We can essentially emulate the wonder wheel. We know how to manipulate it, how to connect to it. And that's something that I would like to work on maybe next year as the next kind of a uh, logical step. Um, because depending on what information any vehicle system has, it can only be augmented by the ability to manipulate and connect your phone uh, to that data set. Even if there is no data, it just makes sense to have a mouse on the handlebars versus somebody attempting to manipulate their phone with their hand not on the handlebar. Can we put this on other motorcycles? Yes. Is there going to be similar functionality? Yes. Is it going to be all encompassing like the GS? Uh, Probably not, and that's just because there's not as much data available on the older bikes. They're just simply not running at the data rate and they're not exposing as much data. So is it gonna work exactly like it? Yes. Uh, will it be really cool and be very helpful? Yes. When it's coming, that's that's gonna be a future project. So if you're thinking, um, yeah, if you sign up for Kickstarter, you're gonna have the ability to do this now, no, um, unfortunately. But it's something we would really like to um, be the next logical step. One thing I'll add to, uh, and if you do have an older GS with the cradle, because they, they did have the cradle on some of the older GSs or you can install it, the, the powering, that will work. But, yeah, the, the but, charging should uh, hold true. I haven't actually tested it, which is why I would want to do first, but there's no reason for me to believe that it wouldn't. Because um, yeah, uh, I, I, I haven't it, tested it. It actually uses the same connector, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, so, yeah. Um, okay. yeah. So we hope that answered your question, Matthew. And then we have another one here for Keith. What okay. about the iOS app? Can I zoom in out any navigation app? Okay, yeah, so that is a, that's a, an interesting one. Uh, the, the, the short answer is no. Um, uh, in the future, possibly yes. Um, um, to take a step back, iOS do, um, does have generic Bluetooth keyboard support. Um, just like Android does, um, although on the iOS side, it's it's a, a newer uh, thing. Um, the issue is um, Apple themselves doesn't implement keyboard navigation into like the home screen. So you saw us navigate the Android home screen. That that won't happen on iOS, unfortunately, until Apple implements keyboard controls, which you know hopefully will be soon with the advent of. Um, Bluetooth keyboards in combination with iPads. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm hoping more and more keyboard navigation will be baked into these apps. Um, uh, it's really up to the app developer to implement keyboard controls. Um, but the beauty is we, we act as a keyboard. So, uh, you know, as in the future, as keyboard support grows, um, your functionality with the Wonderlink outside of the Wonderlink app will grow. Um, my plan too is um, to to speak to um, our testers and and our and our backers to see what their favorite navigation maps are in iOS. And um, I've had um, great um, success in the past just contacting a developer and saying, "Hey, you know, have you thought about adding, you know, in this case, keyboard navigation? It's it's really not a big deal to add to your app, uh, and you know, then we can control it." Um, and then I think too, you, uh, Keith has kind of segued into more of the iOS yes. to optimize it. And I, he's, you're gonna be putting a video out pretty soon. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> uh, as an Android user, I, I did all my initial development Android, um, but we've been ramping up the iOS project and it's currently about like 95% of where the Android app is. Um, all, the, all the major functionality is there. It's, it's just cosmetic stuff. Like um, we have an, a, a night mode uh, that kind of is, um, goes white on black versus black on white. So you can switch between those two modes. That's one of the things we need to, to implement on the iOS mm -hmm. side. But um, you'll, you'll see the apps are, are gonna be almost identical in appearance. Um, there are some limitations with uh, iOS and it's, it's something all developers deal with. Apple really has things locked down. Um, so there's a couple of things we do on the Android side, we, we just can't do on the iOS side. And that includes, um, uh, they don't have a standard API for um, music control. So um, Pandora and stuff like that currently isn't controllable through the app. Um, however, you can play your iTunes music library and 
front, you know, fast forward, next song, all the same stuff we did with Android demo. Um, um, what I've started reading is some of these products have an, their own interface. So uh, again, I'm going to kind of work with the testers and backers to find out what their favorite music players are and, and, and start targeting them to look at it. Can I deal with these directly? Um, it's very similar on the navigation side with iOS. There's no standard um, if, uh, API to launch navigation or to um, uh, decide what your favorite navigation app is. Um, on iOS, I, I, I basically have to define um, each navigation app that I've identified has a way to to launch it, to, to send a route um, or, or a waypoint. Um, so uh, currently the iOS app supports Google, or, yeah, Google Maps, Android Maps, and Waze. Uh, and I'm looking to implement more um, a, as we go. And, and that's another area where um, I, I, I'm gonna work with other developers to see if I can, you know, can you guys create a, 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 a scheme to launch your app? Um, is, could you add keyboard navigation to your app? Um, um, another limitation is um, with Siri. Siri, you cannot call Siri up with um, software. It, it can be called up with a hardware button um, on your headset if you act as a headset. So unfortunately you can't with the Wonder Wheel launch Siri, but a lot of, it may be a moot point because a lot of headsets, even my old X1 that's pre-Siri um, can launch Siri. Um, with a long press of, of one of the buttons. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, that's that, that basically summarizes uh, the, the iOS side. And I know I went a little far, but uh, no, I wanted good. everyone to understand that, uh, you know, iOS is, is gonna be, um, uh, is gonna be a little couple steps behind the Android side. And it's, mm -hmm. unfortunately it's, it's, it's just the nature of uh, the Apple ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So those were great questions. Um, we don't know if anybody came in late, wants us to attempt to try and demonstrate anything again. Um, the uh, Kickstarter uh, actually uh, uh, records this. Yep. And so it's gonna be viewable later. So you can maybe more areas of this video are more important to you than others. And you can you know, kind of find your way through the, and find the information that, that you may need. Um, Keith and I are very proactive on this project. If uh, we get any kind of comment, email, we try and get back to you as soon as we yeah. possibly can. Um, we're, we're both really busy, but again, we, we love working on this project. And so we really want to see it be successful. And uh, we, uh, this is a new venture for Keith and I. We met probably a year ago, just kind of talking about the BMW CAN system. And then we, we got the idea for the Wonderlink and we've just been working fast and furious on it and trying to get it to go. So we really want this thing to go over and uh, we really appreciate everybody's uh, questions, comments, the, the funders. Um, again, another special thank you to Martin. He's been our all-star beta tester, giving us tons yeah. of feedback, um, putting up videos, helping answer questions, you know, um, and he's just, uh, to, what was his phrase? Uh, he had a nerve nerdgasm when he, when he received the baby and was able to manipulate yeah. his phone with his with his Wonder Wheel. So, anyway, special thanks to Martin and our families for all the support and all of our backers for the support. And that's all I got. You know? Yeah, like uh, like Wade said, this has been uh, originally this was uh, we toyed with this idea of just building it for ourselves, and once we got it kind of working, we were just like, man, this this thing's too cool to kind of keep to ourselves. Um, so it's it's been 13, 13 months, fourteen months. Are we even online? Oh yeah, eleven. Thirteen or fourteen months of uh, all of our uh, free time going into this yeah. project, and no such thing as free time. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, it's all going into this. So, and like Wayne said, you know, we we want to make this thing great for everyone. Um, you know, we had our ideas when we first implemented the UI and stuff like that, but you know, we we don't want to be that monolithic garment. You know, we want to react to our, our end users and, and, and make it better and, 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 and get those out quicker uh, to you. And, uh, you know, as a backer, you, you will have um, lifetime beta access to our software mm -hmm. in, in the beta channels. Uh, so you have the opportunity, if you want to test, um, you'd be able to have access to those uh, test apps and give us early feedback. 
uh, to help shape the product. Um, and then another thing I just wanted to add, uh, we, what we've got not via a question here, but from other people is like, what is this thing gonna cost? Um, we don't have final numbers on that, but we're looking somewhere in the ballpark for it to be sustainable, uh, anywhere from 250 to 300 American. Mm -hmm. um, and currently the Kickstarter uh, is at 200. So there is a, a, a substantial cost savings to be had. You know, obviously it's gonna be a brand new thing that's, you know, uh, just finding its legs. So it's hard for some people to sign on to that. But if you do start on, or if you do sign up and back, um, you know, you're gonna be getting a pretty great deal. And another question I've got, because we seem to have a lot of international interest in it is, you know, what is it gonna cost internationally? And my only response to uh, so long as we're not beholden to any government to uh, manipulate or price tier per country, you know, if it costs 250 in the US, it's gonna cost 250 um, US dollars in any other country that um, is willing to buy it. Um, shipping, you know, obviously is, there's probably gonna be a premium on that to get to certain areas of the world. But again, uh, we're not looking to sell this to retailers who are gonna market up anything like that or to exporting companies, anything like that. Um, Keith and I both, uh, you know, we're from the ground up, we do everything. Um, I build the boards currently, we'll probably outsource that, um, but we've designed the enclosure, or I should say Keith has, has done a phenomenal job with it. That form factory has is small, sleek, it's light, it's robust. Um, I'm not saying you can take these things and throw them against the wall, but I bet you could and it's gonna be just fine. Um, so yeah, to, to answer that, that sales uh, question, yeah, we don't plan on uh, you know, manipulating any kind of uh, uh, pricing. It's, it's probably gonna be right in between 250 to 300 American dollars and whatever your country's VAT is, then that's what it is. So. Thank you, and uh, we haven't received any new questions, so I think we're gonna sign off. Again, you can um, download this video or email Keith or I anytime, and we're happy to take your questions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Thank appreciate you. it.